far as into Japanese culture, I was definitely a big meathead. I was all about America, just playing sports, getting out there, eating a steak, playing football every day. But then I started getting into the Japanese culture. You know, I started dropping my opinions where I was like, this country's stupid. It's not even the size of California. They got a giant blizzard running around there. What the hell is that? But then, starting to get into it, I was like, whoa, they actually know what they're doing. They got some good stuff going on here. I first started getting into Japan when I was in the ninth grade. Uh, at first, I wasn't really into it at all. But then I found out I had a little bit of Japanese blood in me, so I decided I would take a class. Take a class in Japanese. Actually, I found out once I was in that class, I was a, uh, I was a natural born Japanese member. I was able to speak the language pretty well. I liked everything about Japan, and they even have cute little, cute little pets to hang out with. So, right around the ninth grade is when I really started getting interested in it. Uh, the first things that I first started to learn was the language. I thought it was really cool. All the symbols look cool. All those, you know, those D-bags out there, they like to get the tattoos of the symbols, but I actually wanted to know what they meant. I didn't want to be one of those guys walking around, you know, with shopping cart on their arm as a symbol. I wanted something sweet, like, you know, like a sword or something, you know, something really cool. So that was the first thing I got into. And then I started following the culture a little bit more and the cartoons there are really popular. Got my boy Vegeta back here. Me and him hung out for a couple hours every day. You know, that kind of stuff. The most popular thing that I started noticing in Japanese culture that everybody else was getting into is they loved anime and wearing all those cat ear things and everything. But get serious, you know, it's cool, but come on. Cartoons are only cool for so long. The stuff that I took from my Japanese class was uh, just how honorable the Japanese culture is and it's more of like a group society. It's not an individual type society, you know, you're not going out there making your own rewards and all that, like, you do it as a group, you do it through teamwork, and everything's, like, real honorable. Like, if I was in the Japanese army, and I got caught by an American or something, I'd take a sword like this, stab it in my belly, and commit seppuku, man. Seppuku is the way of an honorable death, where if you were ever captured, like a prisoner of war, you don't let those schmucks kill you. You kill yourself in an honorable way by taking a knife and putting it in your belly and going and cutting upwards. And yeah, it's pretty gruesome. So I got really interested in Japanese culture. So then one summer I decided, I decided that I would go to Japan. And uh, I lived there for a whole summer, three months. And there, uh, probably the coolest thing that I was doing there was the food. I got to eat a lot of interesting food. I got to eat a lot of octopus, a lot of squid. I even at one point got to eat an eel liver. That was kind of weird, but tasted kind of good. Of course, you got your sushi, which is not as popular there as it is here. Surprisingly not. Uh, and the other thing you do, you know, just living the Japanese culture every day. Just watching out for Godzilla, making sure, you know, he's not on the attack. My host family was real, real cool. They, uh, you know, they accepted me as, as one of their sons right away. They were real nice to me. Even though I wanted to pay for stuff, they, would, they wouldn't let me. They just wanted, you know, they wanted me to be happy at every time. Uh, there was one time where I wanted to buy a gift for one of my ex-girlfriends and uh, they were like, no, you know, let me buy this for her. And it's like, I don't know why you're doing this. This has nothing to do with you, but thank you. You are the nicest family ever. My favorite experience in Japan was probably the one night where we went out with a bunch of friends and we may have partaken in some drinking and then doing some karaoke to the point where we were actually kicked out because we were a bunch of guaylos and we broke a bunch of glasses on accident. Guaylo is actually a Chinese word for foreigner, which they which they call, in Japan, they would actually call you a gaijin, which means you're just a foreign person. Whoa, Wailo, why you always watch this Japanese stuff? You're a white man. Shut up, gaijin. This stuff is cool. Go back to your room and eat your rice. All right. Uh, recently in Japan, there was a, a giant earthquake that caused a tsunami, and it was pretty devastating in Japan. Um, as soon as I heard that happen, I immediately called my host family and made sure they were okay. And luckily they were far enough south where they're not really being affected by a lot of it. So it was really good to hear, but it's still, it's really 
it's really hard to hear all that with you know a place that you've lived and you see it going through all that trouble. Basically, if I had the chance, I'd fight every tsunami I ever I ever encountered. After living in Japan, I often get asked the question, would I rather live in Japan or would I rather live in America? And it's a really, really hard decision. In all honesty, if I could do it the ideal way that I wanted to, I would live in Japan during the winter here and I would live here during the summer. That way I could kind of get the best of both worlds and avoid a lot of the snow, which is cool. I think probably where most people got their start in Japanese culture is with Pokemon. Uh, I'm pretty sure whether boy or girl, anyone our age, you know, right around that 18 to 21 right now, everyone has played Pokemon. Everyone knew about it. Everybody had the trading cards. I mean, come on. He's adorable. How could you not like him? People often ask me, they're like, what are you going to do with that experience of Japan? What are you going to do with the stuff that you learned in school about Japanese? And actually, I think what I want to do is probably move to Japan for a little bit and teach English there and uh, be a teacher there, teach English, kind of get, you know, get my feet wet there, see if I really like it. And if I do, maybe I'll stay there. Maybe I'll stay in Japan. If not, I can always come back to America. That's the beauty of America. I'll keep my American citizenship. But as of right now, my plan is I want to move there, hang out with my Pokemon, and just do some Nihongo.